this, this, these monies from Pedal the Cause will be, in my view, transformative in that it could produce data uh, in patients, actually in patients, that we can communicate to the scientific community that will suggest not only that a bigger study should be done to, con to confirm our results, but also, if true, will change how we do transplants for decades, in my view. Pedal the Cause, I'm not thanking them this year for their help. I'm thanking them for the next 30 years for their help because I suspect that this will continue to be a primary driver of biomedical dollars in our community. It has to be because we can't survive as a great academic medical center without support from the community. And this is going to be, in, I'm, I'm depending on you to keep on doing what you're doing and I congratulate you for all of your efforts so far. It's been fantastic and we need you. So I have a, it's a, just a, a perfect example. I, I had a sort of a cr harebrained idea about how to um, make bone marrow transplantation safer and better for patients. It was a crazy observation that, you know, when we do a transplant, we dump cells from the donor into the recipient. And those, the donor cells repopulate the recipient so that the bone marrow and blood of the recipient becomes that of the donor. And that's how you get rid of your leukemia. But the problem is that there are cells in the donor population of cells that attack the recipient, which is good because they also attack the leukemia. So the, the great thing about it is it replaces the bad bone marrow with good bone marrow. The, uh, and the, the, it, it, it attacks the leukemia. But the bad thing is those cells can also attack the recipient so the recipient actually suffers and sometimes dies. And that's really been the major limitation with bone marrow transplantation. And if we could f figure out how to fix uh, that problem, then we could extend this procedure for patients with mismatched donors, or for patients that don't have any good donors at all, or for non-malignant diseases where it's very difficult to justify replacing one disease with another. And so what we, uh, um, we made this crazy observation that the cells, some cells in the donor uh, stem cell product actually are there to suppress the immune response. So they're actually in our own bodies in, in large numbers uh, to actually prevent our own lymphocytes, our own T cells from reacting against ourselves. And if you eliminated those cells, we die of autoimmune disorders. So we have cells in our body that normally live there that actually prevent our own immune system from attacking ourselves. And if you somehow eliminated those cells, then that would be a problem. So those, prob those cells are really powerful. And the problem is they're very rare and they're very hard to grow outside the body. And there's no way to collect them or expand them and infuse them into patients. Because one way would be to just infuse a lot of those cells into patients when they're getting a transplant, and that would block the graft-versus-host disease effect. And we did that in mice. So we showed that if we took a bunch of mice and we isolated these cells, that we could then, when we added these to a regular stem cell product, it blocked this bad effect of transplant, and the mice looked perfectly well with normal donor bone marrow growing in them with no graft-versus-host disease. And they also eliminated their leukemia if they had leukemia as well. So we said, well, that's great, uh, but we can't collect those cells normally from a human. But what if we actually figured out a way of making them in vivo from cells that were normally going to attack the recipient? So there's one gene. It turns out there's one gene that actually makes a cell that normally attacks your body into a, into a cell that protects your body from attack. And this one gene is a, a gene that dictates the expression of a bunch of stuff. And uh, that gene is normally silenced or completely not expressed because the gene, uh, the, uh, the, um, the regulation of the gene is modified or regulated by a process called methylation. So methylation, when you methylate the promoter of the gene, the gene is not expressed. And when the gene is not expressed, those T cells attack. And if we unmethylate or take the methyl groups off the regulatory region of that gene, then the gene is expressed. And when the gene is expressed, the cell becomes very suppressive. It can actually prevent this uh, reactivity. And so that's the problem with bone marrow transplant. The number of regulatory cells is so small that they can't protect the recipient against this attack. 
and we can't grow them and get enough of them to actually increase their numbers sufficiently to actually block this effect. So what we did is we figured out how to pharmacologically convert these cells that were normally going to be attacking cells that express none of this gene and have a lot of methylation on the promoter to be unmethylated by chem chemically fixing this. So at first we did in, you know, studies in the laboratory with cells, both human and mouse, and showed that the gene was not expressed and the promoter was methylated. And we put in this, uh, this chemical and we unmethylated the promoter and the gene was expressed. So that was the first good news. Then we actually tested those cells and showed that those cells that usually were attacking cells, now when that gene was unmethylated and the gene was expressed, the cells were suppressive. And so then we tested them uh, in an in vivo mouse model and showed when we did this in vivo and give, gave this drug to the mice, which is a relatively harmless drug, and it's approved, by the way, for other conditions. This is a completely unknown use of this drug which is actually proof for something completely different. And when we use this drug in a mouse, it, in the mouse it converted the cells that were normally going to attack and kill the mouse into cells that protected the mouse against this graft versus host disease. So it took, it, it took these cells that were going to destroy the mouse into cells that were going to protect the mouse by just treating these cells, the mice with this harmless drug for four or five days. And so the mice lived completely normally after that with no signs of graft versus host disease. And when we looked at leukemia models, the leukemia went away. So it's kind of complicated, but we, the observation was that there was one gene that made a, uh, these T cells um, suppressive. And that one gene was always silenced because the promoter, the regulatory region, was methylated. And there was a drug developed completely for other reasons, which we know demethylated promoters. So we tested it in this setting, both in vitro and then in the, in the actual, in the mouse model and then in man. Uh, now we're, we're, we want to test it in man. So we had developed all these beautiful preclinical models showing that administration of this drug would turn on the gene, make the donor cells suppressive, and protect the animals against graft versus host disease. And all the animals survived whereas all the animals that got the unmanipulated donor stem cell grafts died of graft-versus-host disease. So now we have this crazy idea, right? And we want to start a clinical trial. And to do all of the science associated with this clinical trial, um, we, we're going to have to get additional funding. But in order to get additional funding, we have to at least show that the trial, we, put, we can put the trial together and actually test this in some patients and it's show that it's safe. And so um, that's what this research is going to do. It's going to allow us to do the preliminary set of patients. And if those patients do well, uh, and in other words, if those patients don't have any problems with their engraftment, the cells coming back after the transplant, if they don't have any other significant toxicities, and if they don't have any graft versus host disease, then in this small study that's being funded by Pedal for the Cause, then we will take that data with our preclinical data and go to the NIH and say, okay, we want a large grant to do a multi-center study, which we think, if it works, would transform how we do bone marrow transplants in the world today. It would actually provide a very simple way of pharmacologically or with a drug converting all these cells that normally kill a patient into cells that protect the patient by just administering a relatively harmless drug for a few days after transplant. And so if we can prove that with the funds that are provided by the pedal for the cause, uh, then we can get additional money to do the definitive study. But we couldn't get funding for that from the National Institute of Health, Health at this point because we have to prove that it's, it's going to be safe in patients. So 